You'll see a parade of stars decked out in them tonight. Tuxedos, black tie on the red carpet. Purists call this classic formal wear the dinner jacket. To those who loathe wearing it, it's a monkey suit. But where did the tuxedo, the outfit that's become required at every ball, wedding, or prom, actually come from? Well, it took its name from here, Tuxedo Park, New York, an enclave built as a resort for New York City's blue blood elite in the 1880s. At the Tuxedo Club's annual autumn ball, they just marked what they calculate as the fashion's 150th anniversary. So we're celebrating the dinner jacket that came to be called for this community in America. Deborah Harmon heads the Tuxedo Historical Society. How did that happen exactly? Well, no one knows exactly how it happened and legends abound. But it almost certainly goes back to this street in London, Savile Row, and this tailor shop, Henry Poole and Company. The tuxedo comes from here. Uh, yes, I'm proud to say that uh, in 1865, uh, the Prince of Wales, who later became King Edward VII, ordered a blue silk, and we called it a smoking jacket. Angus Cundy heads Henry Poole. At the time, it was radically informal. Oh, absolutely, yes. Edward, Prince of Wales, was the eldest son of Queen Victoria, who in those days insisted on white tie and tails at all dinners. And uh, I think he got a bit fed up with that. <laughs> and uh, so we had to make this short jacket. For anyone who doubts the claim of Henry Poole and company... Where are we going here? Uh, we're going to the archive room just around here. Cundy will show you the evidence. This is where you keep all the old records. Oh yep. my, look at this. <laughs> These are the records of every order that's been placed Absolutely. at Poole? Yep, yep, every order since 1846. Wow. They still have the prince's order entered by hand. In 1865, the Prince of Wales ordered a blue silk smoking jacket lined silk with silk collar and cuffs. But how the style made its way across the pond to America is not so clearly documented. There are a number of theories. The most credible, really, is that men from Tuxedo Park, members of the Tuxedo Club, went back and forth to England a lot, so they saw this new fashion. Deborah Harmon says it's impossible to pinpoint the first to wear the dinner jacket. Henry Poole and company had a number of clients from Tuxedo Park, including Pierre Lorillard, the tobacco magnate who founded the resort. It caught on very quickly, and men from Tuxedo Park, uh, in number, started wearing this fashion in New York. And people would say, what are they wearing? And, oh, those are the men from Tuxedo. And the name caught on remarkably quickly. That's what's astounding about it, is that within two years in advertising, it was called the Tuxedo. Over the years, of course, people have taken liberties with the classic dinner jacket, coming up with some pretty colorful designs. Admit it, you knew someone in the 80s who wore something like this. It's called the Lavender Monaco, but it's got nothing on the Orange Crush. I know, I look like a creamsicle. The formal wear folks say they don't get a lot of call for these anymore. I don't know why, but black is back in fashion. That's a relief. At the celebration in Tuxedo Park, the guests wisely preferred the classic look. Angus Cundy and his son came to share the history of what they still insist on calling the dinner jacket. You don't call it the tuxedo in Britain? But, no, not at all. The Cundys also came to refute colonial attempts to lay claim to their creation. To such an extent that a certain American newspaper said the tuxedo was an American invention. <laughs> and so I, that is yet another reason for me being here tonight to uh, say not quite. <laughs> Indeed. The Brits created it, we gave it a name. Nearly a century and a half later, the world is still wearing the tuxedo.